One of the main themes of President Obama's campaign was his opposition to the war in Iraq. He heavily criticized the Bush administration for the 2003 invasion and vocally opposed the war from the very beginning, when he was still an Illinois state senator. Now, as president of the United States, Obama's finally announced his plan to pull U.S. troops out of Iraq. In a speech at Camp Lejeune in North Carolina on Friday, Obama appeared to spell out a clear date for withdrawal. As a candidate for president, I made clear my support for a timeline of 16 months to carry out this drawdown, while pledging to consult closely with our military commanders upon taking office to ensure that we preserve the gains we've made and to protect our troops. These consultations are now complete, and I've chosen a timeline that will remove our combat brigades over the next 18 months. Under President Obama's plan, up to 50,000 U.S. troops would remain in Iraq through 2011. As I have long said, we will retain a transitional force to carry out three distinct functions, training, equipping, and advising Iraqi security forces as long as they remain non-sectarian, conducting targeted counterterrorism missions, and protecting our ongoing civilian and military efforts within Iraq. Initially, this force will likely be made up of 35,000 to 50,000 U.S. troops. But President Obama's decision to keep 50,000 troops in Iraq has angered some critics of the war. Iraq veterans against the war described Obama's proposal as a plan for almost three more years of an unjustified military occupation. Obama's speech on Iraq left several major questions unanswered. He did not address whether the U.S. will keep permanent military bases in Iraq, and he made no promise to withdraw the over 100,000 private U.S. military contractors and mercenaries stationed in Iraq. For a debate today on President Obama's Iraq plan, we're joined by two guests. Lawrence Korb is a senior fellow at the Center for American Progress. He's a former assistant secretary of defense under President Reagan. He's the author of more than 20 books. His latest article is called The Promise Withdrawal from Iraq. He's joining us from Washington, D.C. And joining me here in our firehouse studio is Jeremy Scahill, award-winning investigative journalist and author of the New York Times bestseller, Blackwater, The Rise of the World's Most Powerful Mercenary Army. He reported extensively from Iraq in the run-up to the 2003 invasion. His latest article, called All Troops Out by 2011, Not So Fast, Why Obama's Iraq Speech Deserves a Second Look. Uh, it appeared at alternate.org. Uh, Lawrence Korb, can you assess the plan laid out by President Obama and why you support it? <clears throat> well, basically, the plan is exactly what he laid out in the campaign. It, he said he was going to withdraw all combat troops uh, within 16 months, and so he put it up by two months, and he said he would leave a residual force uh, in, uh, in there to carry out the three missions that uh, he mentioned, going after uh, the remnants of al-Qaeda, uh, helping the Iraqi security forces deal with uh, uh, any type of uh, violence other than sectarian, and to protect uh, Amer Americans there. In many ways, <clears throat> what uh, the, the campaign promise that Obama made was actually uh, overcome by events, because President Bush, who for the longest time had resisted a timeline, agreed in the Status of Forces Agreement uh, with the Iraqis in December of 2008 that all forces would be out by the end of uh, 2011. So what President Obama is just doing is carrying out that, uh, that, that agreement, because these uh, residual forces have to be out by the end of uh, 2011. Jeremy Scahill, your assessment. Well, I mean, I, I agree with something that Larry said there at the uh, at the end. I mean, Obama essentially gave Bush's uh, victory in Iraq speech um, when he appeared in front of Camp Lejeune. I mean, this this for all practical purposes was policy uh, the day that Bush left office. So we're not seeing any radical departure from official U.S. policy at the end of the uh, Bush administration. And of course, as uh, uh, Lawrence uh, indicates, that was the result of a very complicated process where the Bush administration was outright criminal in um, in, re in its refusal to recognize uh, anything even. Uh, 
vaguely resembling the sovereignty of the, the people of Iraq. Uh, but let's, let's be clear here on, on three major problems with the Obama-Iraq plan. First of all, this residual force that Obama uh, is going to be implementing. Now, right now, the numbers they're discussing are 35 to 50,000 troops. Um, I've long spoken out against this residual force, and there are many activist groups in this country that, when Obama was running uh, for president, uh, called his office and said no residual forces remaining in Iraq. Uh, the scope of the mission of these residual forces, while it sounds specific to some, uh, phrases such as counterterrorism uh, have, have become uh, almost meaningless uh, in, the, uh, in the America we now live in when uttered by uh, politicians. Uh, we see how they've been applied over the past eight years and, quite frankly, under the Clinton administration as well. So I'm very concerned about the, uh, the type of operations that this 35 to 50,000, if it actually gets down uh, to that number under the timeline Obama um, has stated. Uh, secondly, Obama has refused to scrap this massive, monstrous U.S. embassy uh, that was built on, uh, on basically slave labor, a uh, $700 million embassy that's the size of Vatican City. Va the Vatican has embassies of its own around the world, and the U.S. has built this abomination um, in Iraq on slave labor, and the Obama administration is going to maintain a staff of over 1,000 people there who are going to necessitate uh, heavily armed security to go anywhere inside of the country. That's been a cocktail for death and destruction in Iraq. Uh, Blackwater has been the company that primarily has been guarding U.S. diplomats. Now it's uh, probably going to be a different company, although many of the same operatives will probably jump over to that uh, company. So change in name, but not necessarily in policy. Even if Obama hires uh, these people through the State Department officially and says there's some system of accountability, uh, they're still going to be putting U.S. lives at a premium over Iraqi lives. And the third uh, problem that I have with the Obama-Iraq uh, plan is that it's full of loopholes. Uh, the Status of Forces Agreement, uh, first of all, Article 27 allows the United States and the Iraqi government to agree that the United States can stay in the country, can engage in any kind of military operations, uh, and also can uh, take action, including military action, to address any, quote, threat, internal or external. Well, what's a threat? The wrong people win an election? We've seen that happen before. Look at the case of Hamas uh, in Palestine. Uh, so the fact of the matter is, you take these three, combined with the fact that senior military officials have told journalists, such as Jim Miklaszewski of NBC News, that the Pentagon is preparing for U.S forces to remain in Iraq potentially for 20 more years. Uh, and I think we have reason to be very concerned about the fact that Obama basically is giving Bush's final Iraq speech. Lawrence Corb, your response. Well, I think it's, uh, a couple of things are, are important. And there's no doubt about the fact that any agreement can be abused. But remember, it was the Iraqis who wanted us out. The Iraqis never really wanted us there, and they're the ones who insisted on the timeline. The other is the Iraqi people get to vote this summer on the, a ref, the referendum about whether they want to support the Status of Forces Agreement. If they decide not to, all the forces have to be out with it, with it, within a year. So I think that's the, the key thing to, to, keep, to keep in mind. And I know our military commanders have talked about, and Secretary Gates has talked about staying there, but we could only do that with the permission of the Iraqis. The final thing is, come 1 July, our forces are out of the cities, they're out of the towns, they're basically back on their bases. They can only go out with the permission of the Iraqi government. Now, I agree there can be abuses, and I do worry that uh, <clears throat> Prime Minister Maliki might try to get U.S. forces uh, to uh, go against some of his enemies. That's why I think in President Obama's speech, when he said not to deal with sectarian issues, I mean, they can ask us, but we don't have to do that. And I would hope that the president and his national security team make that clear to our military commanders exactly what they can and cannot do. Well, see, you know, one, of, one of the issues I have here is, is going back to this issue of what if the wrong people win an election. Uh, the Iraqi people have a right to choose leaders that are hostile to the United States, that are hostile to U.S. corporate aims uh, in the Middle East uh, more broadly and in Iraq uh, specifically. And I think that uh, U.S. history has shown that when the wrong people win elections, the U.S. will intervene militarily, overtly, covertly, behind the scenes, in front of the, the, the world public. Uh, and I think that uh, the fact that Thomas Ricks, one of the most well-informed journalists covering this war has indicated that it's very likely that a leader will emerge in Iraq that is hostile to U.S. interests, that is close to Tehran, um, and is not going to be someone that's perceived by the United States to be a friend. So uh, the fact is that the Maliki government could be substantially weakened by uh, indigenous forces within Iraq, and the Obama administration could step in and say, we're going to defend this uh, uh, flailing 
uh, regime. What I found very disturbing about Obama's speech, among other things, was the fact that he officially co-signed Bush's major lies on Iraq. Uh, when he talked about uh, the mission of U.S. troops in Iraq, he said, "We, we I want to be very clear, we sent our troops to Iraq to do away with Saddam Hussein's regime, and you got the job done. I'm sorry, Mr. Obama, the troops were sent to Iraq on the lie of weapons of mass destruction, and he co-signed that Bush administration lie. He also said, we'll leave the Iraqi people with a hard-earned opportunity to live a better life. That is your achievement, he said to the U.S. troops. That is the prospect that you have made possible. Again, no, not a better life. We're talking about upwards of a million Iraqis that have been killed, their lives decimated, 20 percent of the country uh, either in need of desperate medical attention, internally displaced, and other 20 percent living outside of the country. I and mean, this has been an utter mess. And he talks about a better future. Iraq has never been in, in, in more shambles than it has been over the course of the U.S. military occupation. We're going to come back to this discussion. Jeremy Scahill, author of Blackwater, The Rise of the World's Most Powerful Mercenary Army, has written a piece in Alternet uh, online at alternet.org. Uh, Lawrence Korb with the Center for American Progress has also written a piece called The Promise Withdrawal from Iraq. He's former Assistant Secretary of Defense under President Reagan. Back in a minute.